everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Today is going to be a good video for us all because I get questions about plant products and things that I'm using all the time. So I thought that I would make a roundup of plant products, things that I've been using a lot lately, and things that I get a lot of questions about. So I hope that you will enjoy this video and definitely check in the description box below for links and places to find all of these products. I'm going to first start out with the number one question that I have been getting lately, which is where do I get these pots? So I started using these pots a few months ago when I got all of my anthurium from Green Spaces because I wanted to make sure that I was putting my plants in a place where I would be able to monitor them really well. And pots like this, this is an orchid pot technically, so there's a lot of drainage around the sides and underneath, so it's just like optimal drainage. If you get root rot in a pot like this, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Something that's really awesome about these pots is because they're see-through, or at least for the most part, you can see through the pot into the roots and see how they're doing. Again, I did want to buy these so that I could see how the plant was doing and it has given me a lot of visibility. Also for how deep the water has infiltrated the soil because if you are not familiar with the way that I water my plants, I'm kind of like a dump water on top of a plant type of person. I definitely don't shallow water any plant that I own. I think it's really important that you saturate your soil completely and that is so easy to see that you've done that with a pot like this because you will see how much of the soil gets wet. And when I have dumped just a little bit of water on here, I'll notice that it's only wet like halfway down. So. I don't know, just some food for thought, but I do get questions about these all the time. This is a five and a half inch orchid pot. I buy these off of Amazon. The seller does have them in stock most of the time. They were out of stock for a while and I was kind of nervous, but I recently put in an order and they come in a pack of 10. And it isn't a bendy plastic pot. I mean, you can see it does bend, but it is of a stronger plastic material. It's definitely thicker plastic than a nursery pot. So it is very sturdy and I feel comfortable having my plants in these. I have a lot of different plants in these, Anthurium, Philodendron, um, Syngonium. I really, really like them and I do recommend them. If you don't like the way that this looks visually, you can definitely pop it into a cover pot to just disguise this and then use it as your inner pot and water with it. I think this is one of my favorite plant products I've ever used and I hope that you'll check them out if you're interested as well. So on the note of pots, I get a lot of questions about this pot right here. So this is the pot that my philodendron mame is living in and I show this plant a lot so the pot gets a lot of attention too, which I'm very glad because the pot is actually made by a female owned small business person that I am friends with on Instagram. This is by Concrete Botanical and I love this pot so much. It is so beautiful. The painted design is really simple. This is the design called LA Baby. And if you want different colors or different designs, you can definitely check out her website. I will link it down below. She has a lot of different designs and like colors and shapes of pots, but for the most part, it is a cylindrical shaped pot like this or a bell shaped pot. Let's talk about spider mites. Okay, so if we remember my spider mite video that I made a couple, I guess it was a couple months ago now, I had a very intense spider mite breakout in my home. Definitely was not the first time I've ever had spider mites, but it was the first time I ever noticed that they were spider mites and it was really thanks to my friends. So if you wanna hear that whole story, I turned it into a story time and how to treat spider mites video. But in the process of treating for spider mites, I was recommended this product, it's called Eight. This specific spray is made by the company Bonide, which has a lot of other insect sprays as well. And it is meant to kill aphids, mealybug scale, spider mites, thrips, and white flies. So those are all of the super common houseplant pests that we will find in our homes. If you do end up buying any sort of product like this, I really, really suggest that you check back here in this booklet and also be careful how you use it because while this stuff can kill our pests that we don't want, it can also kill things that we do want like pollinators and other things like that, like beneficial insects. So think about that before you decide where you're going to use it. But I will say that this spray, eight is the best spray that i have found for insect control especially for spider mite so what i've done is spray down the plant every five days with this one for three cycles and then they're gone and i don't see them again until maybe i don't know a couple months later when i unfortunately get spider mites again <laughs> we know my struggle with spider mites but what i'm saying is this is a super super effective spray and i have seen it work just after one spray and i still continue to do it after that just in case. 
It doesn't have a super negative smell. I mean, it kind of smells like alcohol if I was to give it like a scent. The only thing that I would say about it that might be a little bit of a negative is it leaves behind like a white, like white watermarks they look like. They're not watermarks, it's obviously just the product. So after you're finished treating the plant, you should spray it down just to get all of that yucky off of it. Um, but other than that, this has been like honestly a godsend for me for taking care of stuff like that. And I believe that I did show me using this when I was treating my spider mites in that video. So definitely if you are looking for just an all around general spray that you can use, this is a really good one and it's eight by Bonide. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about an accessory that I get questions about all the time because I do wear it in a lot of my videos because I wear it almost every day. So this is my Monstera Adansonii necklace and this is made by the artist a tea leaf or the jewelry maker a tea leaf and it is something that I wear all the time. I love this necklace so much. We actually worked together to launch this design a couple of months ago and I think a lot of people have picked it up and really enjoyed it but I know that I get a ton of questions about it. Also, if you are ever curious about the accessories that I'm wearing, I like to wear plant earrings and plant necklaces when I film my videos, and I actually made an entire dedicated video about my plant jewelry, so if you are interested in that, I will link it in the cards and in the description box below, so you can just, you know, read about where I've gotten my jewelry, and also, there are some discount codes. I'm not sure if they're still valid because the video is a little bit old, but you have discount codes to try if you wanted to pick up anything. So I would say that the times that I struggle the most with understanding what my plants need is during season transitions. So from winter to summer and summer to winter, you know, where I live, we don't really have spring or fall, so it kind of goes from one to the other. And the thing that I struggle the most with is knowing when and how often to water. And I think this is especially common when it's going from winter to summer. This year, I have had a lot of plants kind of suffer from underwatering issues. I do have a lot of plants, but it feels like a manageable amount for me. It's just that I wasn't paying attention as much as I could, and I was waiting too long to see those signs that my plants were thirsty before I watered, which is isn't necessarily the best thing that I could be doing. So what I have been using more often is my moisture meter. I have had this for a while and I use it on and off. It's definitely not something I use for every single plant before I water, but it has helped me to sort of gauge and like reframe my mind on when a plant needs to be watered and how often, because honestly with some of my plants, I can't tell until it's almost too late. So I'm kind of reteaching myself how to read my plants again in this new growing season. And this moisture meter has been a really great way to do that. This is from Amazon. I don't think that it was very expensive and it works really, really well. All you do is stick it into a pot with a plant in it and then the meter will tell you if it is dry or wet or somewhere in between. So this is a uh, philodendron Florida and I recently watered it. I mean within the last week or so. So let's see what we have. It's already dry. See you guys, this is what I'm talking about. So I literally just watered this plant a few days ago and it's already dry. I would not have thought to water this plant, but obviously it needs it. So that is why this moisture meter is really helpful for me, especially right now. All right, so I'm kind of bringing this one in as a funny moment. So if you watch my water with me videos or if you follow me on Instagram stories, you might see that I water my plants with interesting things like my kettle. <laughs> so this is obviously not a very conventional way to water your plants, but <laughs> trust me, it actually really works because there's a spout and it does carry quite a bit of water. Honestly, I'm definitely a person who uses what is around me before I go and I buy something. So I do have a lot of vessels like this around my house, like vases and a blender I also use and this and just things like that. I will use these instead of going out and buying a watering can just because I feel like I don't need a watering can. So obviously with the nature of this video, I am showing you plant products but I want you to know that you don't need to have all of these things. There's a lot that you can use around your home for your plants, like your tea kettle if you need to water really quick or something like that. You don't need to have a top of the line watering can or anything like that. So definitely keep it as simple as you can. The next planty product that I've been using a ton is this plant Velcro. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It is Velcro made for your plants. I don't, I was not expecting that to just come off, but in any case, it is Velcro made for your plants. And I use this sort of like braces against my plants with moss poles and things like that. So I will use these to tether a plant 
together so that it isn't splaying itself out or I will use it to tether a plant to a pole so that it can grow upwards and just be a little bit more tamed. A lot of my plants are super contained and like upright. As you can see with this one, you can see the ties kind of along here. And I prefer that look over them kind of laying out and doing whatever they want just because my apartment is not huge and my plants already take up a lot of space and I don't want them to be knocked over by my dog or my husband more than they already are. So these plant ties are a really, really great way to tame your plants and also train them upward so that they can have faster growth, bigger growth, and perhaps interact with the moss pole sooner than it would have if it didn't have some sort of tie. The next plant product that I want to discuss today is a huge, five gallon jug of water. So we know already that I use distilled water for my anthurium and just like more sensitive plants like calathea and also my humidifier. And in the place that I live in, it's very dry. So that requires me to use quite a bit of water. And with that, it was requiring me to either buy a lot of jugs of water, like smaller jugs, or collect jugs to go fill them up and it just became really, really tedious, and I was realizing that I wasn't watering my plants as often as I should, and my humidifier was going dry way too often for way too long. And that was just because I didn't wanna go out to the store every 10 days, or even every five days sometimes, to get more water for my plants in my humidifier. So what I finally decided to do is get two of these five gallon water jugs from a local hardware store. And all I'm gonna do now is go and fill these up from the bulk store rather than filling up like five individual jugs of old milk. <laughs> Which this obviously will hold more water and it is less to carry around. It's very heavy, that's definitely a thing. But it means less trips out and less reasons for me to ignore my plants and just sort of do whatever I want and not necessarily what they want. I would definitely suggest getting a big jug like this, maybe signing up with a water service to have it delivered to you like however often you need. Or if you have a bulk store around the corner, you can also go fill them up there like I'm going to do. All right, and the last two things that I wanna talk about today are my greenhouse and the grow lights that are in them. So both of these items are from Amazon and I would highly, highly suggest that you check them out. I get questions on them all the time, how they are, how my plants respond to them and all of these things. So I want to say that the greenhouse itself, I would very, very highly suggest that you use it inside, maybe not outside. I have heard mixed reviews of it melting or falling over or whatever the case may be. It just like didn't go super well. I am noticing myself that it is a little bit rickety, but I have figured out ways to keep it secured in itself. A lot of people suggested using it in conjunction with twist ties or gluing all the poles together so that it is more secure. I think as long as you do one of those two things, you will have a much better experience with it. Something that I did to the greenhouse to sort of amend it in my own way was add a coco choir mat to the shelf. The shelves are a grid shape, so I was noticing that plants that had smaller pots would oftentimes fall over or fall through, or they just weren't very steady, so I wanted to create more stability. So I sewed, I like stitched on the cocoa choir mat onto the shelves, and it's worked out really, really well. I will say that I do get fungus gnats in there sometimes, so I put a sticky trap or two in there, and that helped out really well. But honestly, every single plant that I have put in there has absolutely thrived and been so happy. It sustains its own humidity, so I don't have a humidifier in there. I do need to get a fan for it so that it has consistent airflow in there, but even without a fan, it hasn't been super bad. I do open it up every few days and sort of like fan it out and leave it open for a while. And so far, so good. I haven't really had any issues in there. So for indoor use, it's really awesome. It is a bit of an eyesore, but honestly, I'm used to it now and it's not that big of a deal. That was really the thing that held me back for so long from getting something like this. But I think that the results I've gotten are definitely worth the fact that it's pretty ugly because my plants are so happy and I feel really comfortable having them in there. Now, as far as the grow lights go, I have made a video about these grow lights when I set them up for the first time when I got them. That that was this last winter time and I set them up underneath my kitchen counter and or my kitchen cabinets and eventually I was having a lot of issues with the lights not wanting to stick to the underside of my cabinets and that wasn't necessarily because of the lights it was mostly because underneath my cabinets is super slick so the command strips just wouldn't even stick to it so now that I have those grow lights in my greenhouse they are amazing and they actually they put off a little bit of heat so it stays warm in there which is really great for the winter time but it is a set of 
three strip LED grow lights. They do have a built-in timer, which has honestly changed my life. It wasn't until a few months ago that I even figured out that it had that. And once I put it on the timer, I don't even think about that greenhouse other than what I want to water or just enjoy the plants in there. I do nothing. So that is automated. The timer is already in there. I don't have to worry when I leave town or anything like that or set up a separate timer. So in general, I would very, very, very highly recommend those grow lights. They're also super bright. All right, you guys, that is all I have for this video. Those are some of my most used or most asked about plant products. I wanted to share them with you all in one place for right now so that you know where to go to find them and just hear a little bit more about them as well, a little bit of a review. I do have an Amazon storefront where I have all of my planty products that I use most often. That is always linked down in the description box below. You can always go and peruse and see what sort of planty products I have down there. I do want to say that even though I would benefit from you ordering from Amazon, something much bigger than myself would benefit from you shopping locally and that is your communities. So if if you did see anything that you liked here, I would definitely suggest that you check out your local plant nurseries or plant shops and see if they might have any of these products as well. If not, of course, Amazon is always a great fallback, but definitely try to shop local first. All right, you guys, that is all I have to say for my spiel. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. And also, if there are any products that I have shown that I didn't talk about in this video, leave a comment down below and I will try to provide a link for you for your perusing. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.